this video is about questions that I have related to Apple intelligence and privacy concerns. I don't know if we're going to fully get answers to the questions I have, but I hope to be able to show you why these questions are important and why you should care about them too. I do have an AI startup, but I am not the cybersecurity guy at said startup. But I think these questions are very important to ask because so many people use Apple because of their privacy features. First, let's look at the information put out from the Apple keynote so we can get a better idea of what we're talking about here. It puts powerful generative models right at the core of your iPhone, making it even more useful and delightful. The next generation of iPhone has been designed for Apple intelligence from the ground up. What Apple is doing is building an Apple intelligence product, I guess, that lives on the device. So in theory, according to what they have claimed, you would have one on your iPhone, and if you have an iPad, you'd have a separate one. And if you have a MacBook, you would have a separate one. And it would live on that specific device. So if that were true, which I'm not claiming that it's not, you would get different results from using Apple intelligence on those three devices. And it seems from their marketing that that's not true. Here's the thing, large language models work by giving a probability distribution as an answer. You give it a word and it will give you a likely next word. Now, sometimes there's more than one likely next word. For example, you could say, Apple intelligence is, what's the next word? It could be a bunch of different things, right? So if this really is one separate thing on your devices and they are not storing any information across devices, then you should get a completely different answer on all three of the devices. And since it hasn't come out yet, we don't know if that's going to be how it is or not. But they did mention this thing called a context or a private context, which implies that the device does know something about you. And I don't really think that they did a good job of making it clear about whether or not that lives on your specific device or on your Apple account. Does that matter? I don't know, I guess that depends on the person. So one thing that we should be asking is what is the private context and where is it stored? Your iPhone is the most personal product in your life. It's part of so many things that make you you, like your relationships and messages, your photos and memories, your calendar, notes, and more. Now, we're bringing together that personal context with the power of generative models to deliver intelligence that understands you. And we're doing it in a way that protects your privacy. Apple Intelligence is the personal intelligence system at the heart of the iPhone 16 lineup, with the ability to understand and create language as well as images, and take action on your behalf to simplify daily tasks. And each of these powerful capabilities is grounded in your personal context. This personal context thing is interesting to me. Microsoft used to have something sort of similar and they kicked it to the curb because a lot of people called it malware because it very much resembled malware. So the question is, why are Apple people okay with this? Apple intelligence draws on the immense power of our silicon to run multiple generative models on the iPhone in your pocket. These models are built by Apple and fine-tuned for your everyday iPhone experiences, and they adapt dynamically to your current activity. For more computationally intensive tasks, Apple intelligence can unlock even more intelligence with private cloud compute. Private Cloud Compute maintains the privacy and security of your iPhone while giving you access to generative models much larger than what fits in your pocket today. It's basically an Apple-specific cloud that sometimes your data is moved on to. And the reason why that could happen is your phone, your tablet, usually also would have 
a device called a CPU, a central processing unit. And most of the time they would not have a GPU, which is required for some higher level machine learning or AI stuff, okay? So in order to get answers to prompts in Apple intelligence, they have recognized that they could potentially have to move that data onto a place where there is a GPU, meaning this Apple cloud. And they have overtly stated that it could be available there for use in even larger um, AI models. Specifically, they have a partnership with OpenAI. Okay, so there's a lot of concern about Apple intelligence cooperating with OpenAI because OpenAI isn't exactly known for their privacy standards. I have questions about that. In the startup that I have co-founded, we don't use the OpenAI API because it's not private, okay? We, if we're going to use someone else's tech, we use Llama because it is private. Zuckerberg has made it so that you can download Llama from Meta onto your device without sending any data to Meta. So in order to keep things private, honor non-disclosure agreements, or even just not share our research with the entire planet, we use Meta. In order to use OpenAI, you have to use their API, which means that you're sending your data to them. <laughs> so the question would be, how does Apple ensure privacy between them and OpenAI? OpenAI can say that they are deleting the data and not using it for their model. OpenAI could easily just lie to Apple, like, yeah, we're gonna delete it and then not. And then how could Apple prove that OpenAI kept your data? In a video that I will link below, Andrew Edwards did grill some people from Apple I feel like he could have maybe grilled them a little harder, but he was in their house. He went to the Apple headquarters and had this meeting with them. And Andrew did ask them about the situation that came up a while back where photos were appearing on your phone after you thought they were deleted. And this Apple marketing guy said, well, that was a database issue. So let me be clear with you. If the data was deleted, it would no longer be in the database, okay? Now, he did say that those were photos that people wanted, so, you know, it's probably fine. But he lied and said that the data was gone when it was not. So the question is, can we trust that Apple is going to delete the data? Or is it going to be kept in a vault somewhere that you can get to at some point. Another thing that this video brought up was the question about whether apps listen to you. And the woman that was in the interview, she was one of the actual developers and she said she is not aware of any apps that have gotten around Apple's security to listen and use your mic without your permission, which is fine. I believe her. I don't think that she has any reason to lie about that. My question is, what happens when the government comes and asks for that? And the marketing guy did have an answer. His answer was, well, we talked to the government about it and tried to explain to them why privacy is so important, which frankly is not an answer, okay? We in this country, in the United States, have legislation in the form of an executive order. I guess it's not the same as legislation, but President Biden signed an executive order stating that any company developing artificial intelligence that the government in the government's own discretion deems to potentially affect national security in any way will be forced to show that 
to the National Security Agency. So if Apple is developing an artificial intelligence entity on your iPhone, and it is only on your iPhone, what happens if the government says, hey, we think that this could potentially affect national security and we need to see it. The other thing that they talked about was, she did talk about how there are no apps that listen to you for marketing. Okay, uh, let's get to some misconceptions. Are apps listening to me at all times? Is my iPhone just transmitting the audio of all my conversations to different companies all day long? We've all had that case where we're having a conversation about a particular product or a topic, and then it seems to show up in an ad, yeah. which seems to show up in a recommendation. And there are a lot of other techniques that are used for that that are a little bit more advanced. So if I go over to your house and I join your Wi-Fi um, and you've been looking at cool, you know, blue couches online, you know, that IP address of me joining your Wi-Fi can be connected in the back end. And that's a, a link that can be used to then serve me ads later. Or maybe if we're connected on different types of social media, there's a lot of pieces in the back end that uh, these powerful models can use to link these things. Uh, so there's other techniques out there to be uh, that are probably responsible for that. Okay, so what she's talking about is still machine learning. So I've done this type of analysis for clients before. There are several different ways you can approach a problem of figuring out who somebody is based on anonymous data. One of the simplest ways is to use a type of unsupervised machine learning called clustering analysis. And with that type of analysis, you actually don't need labels on data and you don't need any identification on the data. So you could take anonymous data um, as long as it is formatted correctly and run it through one of these algorithms and get a whole bunch of information about somebody who you don't even know. Because what the whole algorithm does is it clusters things. It takes data points from anonymous sources, let's just call it person one, person two, and person three, okay? And you can take person one, person two, and person three and find a whole bunch of information about them based on the set of data and cluster them according to their interests. Um, and that is how a lot of companies can come up with ways to target advertising to people that they don't really know and without even listening in on stuff. And she did also bring up another approach to doing this, which is with a recommender system, um, similar to what Netflix, Hulu, and YouTube use. But frankly, I would use clustering analysis first because it would require a lot less compute. So does anonymization actually work to ensure privacy? And how does sending anonymized data to OpenAI actually ensure your privacy? Another issue that I would like to bring up is Apple's evolving definition of what privacy even is. So let's go ahead, write in the comments, what would you say that privacy is? How would you define privacy in your life? Not even just related to your devices, but in general. See, I would define it as keeping my business a secret, right? Privacy is not changing with the curtains open. Apple seems to define privacy as a choice. And that's fine, I get it. You opt into whatever you're doing and Steve Jobs did say ask them every time, right? So it's gonna ask you, do you want to share your data onto Apple Cloud? And if you say no, is that gonna completely destroy the entire reason why you bought the iPhone in the first place? What's it gonna be like to use the iPhone that is equipped with Apple intelligence without being able to use Apple Cloud? And what's it gonna be like without using their integration with OpenAI? How useful will the device be?